Today I would like to talk to you about using multi-level menus in Iron Speed Designer. So let's get started. For this demonstration I created a sample application using the Southwind Access Database that comes packaged with Iron Speed Designer. When Iron Speed Designer generates uh, an application initially, it creates a multi-level menu horizontally or vertically depending on the chosen design theme. A menu entry is created for every page that is generated. So, the total number of menu entries created, therefore, is proportional to the number of pages you asked IronSpeed to generate during the application wizard process. Now, most often we will want to edit these menu entries, whether it's to adjust the menu text, uh, perform security, or perhaps page redirects for, to different pages. So why don't we learn how to do that next? Let's navigate the Application Explorer tree to find the subfolder for menus. Note that the number of menus present initially will depend on whether you created mobile pages or not. In this case, we've got our menu panels folder here that contains our menus. Here we've got three entries. We have uh, menu.ascx, which is a user control for our main menu for most of our regular pages. And then we've also got uh, menu mobile, which you can see here uh, will present itself. And uh, you can see some of what uh, the mobile menu looks like. And of course, we've also got start mobile, which will give us our initial menu. Uh, and, uh, and you can see, you can kind of see the way that works there. In any event, let's move into design mode and go back to our regular menu. And now we've got two ways that we can edit the menu. We can uh, put our cursor over menu.ascx in the application explorer and go right click configure. We can also move our cursor over into the design area and also go right click configure. So let's do that. And you can see now uh, when we do that, that the menu wizard shows up. And uh, so the menu wizard works pretty simply. At the very top, you have a root entry called menu.sitemap followed by all of the other particular entries that are available to, uh, to this particular menu. And we can expand uh, each of these as required. Now, uh, so far so good. On the left hand side, we've got a list of all of the menu entries. On the right hand side, we have a list of all of the properties. And we'll go through that here uh, in this next section. There are several functions available to us that are not immediately apparent. For example, uh, I can highlight a particular level and go right click uh, insert menu item. When I do that, you can see that at the very top, Iron Speed has inserted a new menu item. I can go over to the right hand side and I can now change the title to something like system tables. Uh, I could also, if I wanted to, add a specific URL. If I wanted to have a systems table, system tables, for example, go to a specific URL. In this case, I'm going to leave it as it is. I could add a particular image URL as well if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave that blank for the moment. Now, at this point, uh, system tables is our highest level entry. Uh, at this point, I could now create, I could turn around and I can take categories. And you'll notice when I, I grab it and, and left click uh, and I move it up slightly, you can see that this black horizontal line appears. And now you can see that I've now moved categories to go under system tables. I could turn around and do the same thing, let's say with products, uh, left click and move it up. And I can now drop it under, whoops, and I'll move it over. And there we go, it now appears as well under products. Uh, you probably also want to do the same thing with, uh, let's say suppliers might also apply, uh, and maybe even shippers, let's put that under there. Now, uh, what we're left with are customers, order details and orders. Now in this case, I probably want orders to be at the very top above system table, so I'll do that. Uh, I may or may not want the, the um, uh, user to to do certain things with some of these detail tables. Um, I probably would want to add order details, for example, from within the order, not here. Uh, this is one of the things that Iron Speed does is it does add a menu entry, as mentioned, to um, uh, for every page it's created. So there's a little bit of a little bit of overhead for us there. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete each of these entries. Now note that normally our control Z would, would be an undo if we were in our regular design surface, but uh, that doesn't work in with, from within the menu wizard uh, unless we decide to hit cancel. If I hit cancel right now, then it will uh, sort of undo all of my changes. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm also going to get rid of some of these other ones that were created. I'm not really sure why we created all those. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, keep the first one uh, just and we'll do um, as a detail table. Sure, why not we leave those two on there? Okay, so now what have we done? Well, we've added uh, a new entry. 
uh, at the sort of at a particular level, um, and I've deleted some entries, and um, I've moved some entries around. So I'll just give you an idea of some of the basic things that you can do here. Obviously, at any other level, if I wanted to, I could insert a new menu item, uh, and I can then drag it, and I could move it down if I wanted to. Okay, so that, that works very well. And of course, uh, I can turn around, and uh, you can see here that in our a URL path, uh, you can see the default pathing that Ironspeed has provided to access the edit order details table. Uh, at this point, I could also add an image URL as mentioned, uh, and in this case I could then pick, uh, I, pick I don't know what we've got for graphics here, uh, better pick something small, so why don't I just pick the, uh, put the add button, even though that's not entirely right, we'll do that, and uh, and now we've added added something along that line. If we now click OK, and go back into live preview, we can now see the changes to our menu. And it'll chug along, do its regeneration, and now you can see that we've got an entirely different looking kind of a menu. We click on orders, there's all the original orders, stuff that we didn't touch. And our systems tables now, we've got this nice, uh, neatly grouped uh, set of uh, items, and that's all done it for us just as quickly. There's customers and there's our order details. And in fact, even here you can see the plus sign, which normally means add, of course, beside our edit order details. And I can always click on that. And, uh, and of course, because I'm just operating within, oh no, there it is, it did work, okay. It did take me to the edit order details table, just a little bit slow there, all right. Okay, I wanna go back and have a quick look at our mobile menu. Uh, and in fact, when it first presents itself, you'll note that the only entry is showing shippers for some reason. This is uh, apparently a design time decision by Ironspeed. However, if I go in and click configure, you can see that I've only got one menu here and they may very well want to, uh, the original intent was just simply to show uh, fewer items uh, at this point. However, I can still insert uh, new menu items uh, and I can, I can still do all of the things that I used to be able to do uh, in terms of single menus, of course, you'll note that it, uh, it won't let me uh, create uh, submenus in here because this is sort of not the nature of, uh, of mobile phones. Uh, but now if we just leave that as an example and we go into live preview, we can see that in fact our menu will change and uh, we will have a straightforward menu. Uh, and you can see there we've now got, uh, we've got what we've got and go back to the menu and there's our menu pages. And of course our new menu items, we didn't add any URLs to it. We just had one for the shippers. So there is uh, that and that's sort of one of the secrets to uh, what's going on with the mobile pages. All right, let's move on and uh, learn how to create a new menu next. Okay, the first easy way to create a menu is to use the iron speed uh, function for creating a duplicate. If I scroll back up to my menus and I gotta jump back into design mode to do it, then I can select a particular existing menu and I can go uh, right click create a duplicate. And so when I do this and I select this function, Iron Speed will uh, in fact make a complete copy of this menu and of course it likes to call it copy of menu which is not entirely realistic. So I'm going to change this to uh, system tables menu so it fits my use this time. I'm going to click OK. Note that when I do this, Iron Speed is automatically going to come up and let us know that we're renaming a menu uh, and that this in fact may cause us problems if this menu is used in other places. Uh, in fact, it isn't used anywhere else because it's a brand new menu, but if it was, uh, then it'd definitely be something we'd have to deal with. And a little later on uh, in this video, I will show you how we're going to deal with that. So, okay, I'll click OK. Iron Speed will uh, go ahead and finish the process, and uh, now it's renamed. Okay, so what have we done? Well, we've in fact used uh, the right-click, uh, create a copy, create a duplicate, uh, and that's worked now. Note over here on my toolbox, you can see now that my new menu does show up, and so in fact I can go over to, let's say, the Add Orders page, and I can now drag and drop my new menu, and I can you know do stuff with it as I want to, uh, click into live preview and I should now be able to see exactly uh, my new menu and um, I can see it the way it is. Uh, now I actually didn't make any changes to this menu uh, which I probably should go back and do for completeness but you will at least be able to see the process of going from creating the menu to actually using it uh, in this particular case via the uh, right click menu option to create a duplicate, which is uh, pretty fast. So what that does is allows me to do a certain amount of work on a particular menu and then reuse that menu again in a, you know, in a slightly different context. So in fact, if I move down now, you can see here that I've got this. Now that actually doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna go back. 
I'm going to come over here and click on System Tables, go right-click Configure, and I'm going to get rid of some of these other things that I've got in here, which I don't want. And in fact, uh, I really don't need the System Tables uh, menu entry anymore because we already named our menu as such. And so in fact, now all I've really done is uh, made some changes to it. I, I don't have to go back and make any changes to the page whatsoever. I'm going to click Live Preview and uh, we should then see our changes. So this again really shows you how easy it is to create a, a menu sort of on the fly if you will, make some changes to it, go back and see it. And in fact now you can see here that we've got this menu. Is this exactly the way we'd probably want it uh, in a uh, in a real-life situation? Perhaps not, but it's a good uh, case to show you where multi-level menus can be used um, and can be used very effectively. Okay, so let's uh, move on and let's learn the next way that we can create uh, a multi-level menu. Okay, second way to create a multi-level menu is uh, through the use of the toolbox, um, but in a little bit different way than we just did previously. Now, so what I'm going to do is go in and uh, I'm just going to leave this menu here for a moment. I'm going to go down a notch. And you'll notice over on uh, the right-hand side in the toolbox, under the headers, footers, and menus area, um, I could have a choice of either using uh, creating a new menu, which is what we're going to do now. And uh, of course, in our last uh, little example, we showed you how to drag and drop a systems table menu. But I'm going to drag the vertical multi-level menu over. In fact, why not put it, uh, we'll put it right below for the moment. And I'm going to uh, let Iron Speed do its work. And you notice now uh, that what Iron Speed has done is it has um, named the menu menu one and it's named it menu one uh, because there's already an object named menu on this page. Um, it, it, coincidentally only, it has also created a menu one uh, named object uh, on uh, over in the menu panels area. So uh, the problem is, is that menu one is not really very uh, descriptive and uh, you know trust me from experience after you've got menu one through nine uh, you forget which one is which. So really what we want to do is we want to rename that menu. Now if I go ahead and rename that say to orders menu because that may be a little more relevant uh, and of course now we're getting the same message that we got before. I'm going to say OK. Um, and I'm going to come back and once that's done we now have a, a new menu called orders menu. But if we come back to our orders table and we scroll down, uh, the reference to our what was menu 1 is now gone uh, because it no longer exists. It's actually now called orders menu. And you'll note even over uh, under the existing menus area uh, it's called orders menu. And if we were to either run this now uh, or even jump down and change this naming to orders menu, uh, Iron Speed for some reason doesn't like that. What we actually need to do is we need to delete the menu, drag and drop the orders menu back on again. Um, and isn't that interesting that it still calls it menu one. Uh, and so you can see, of course, that menu one is really the name of the object, uh, not uh, referencing the underlying menu. And so uh, that's why we have to drag and drop it. So let me go ahead and, and do the quick uh, generation and compilation uh, in live preview. It's pretty snappy in this latest version. And we will uh, let that chug through. And we should now see a vertical menu um, that should have the same kind of menu entries uh, as uh, and I think, of course, we just made a copy of our regular menu, uh, and so it's going to look <coughs> the same as our other menu. Uh, I can certainly go in and edit it and add and remove items uh, and do it that way. And so as soon as the process is done, we'll now see, <coughs> let me scroll down, uh, that in fact uh, there's uh, the new menu that was created. Note, however, that what Iron Speed does is it creates you know a number of these sort of generic entries for some reason. Uh, if I go now come back over here to my orders menu, I go right click configure, uh, really don't want, you know, I don't want any of these. Uh, and so but what I can do is I can create new menu items. Uh, and so maybe I'm going to do something called product search. Um, I can create another one uh, and I can call it uh, order inventory. Um, and uh, what else can I do? I can, oh, I can insert a separator. And I can drag that down if I wanted to, to put them in here. Uh, insert uh, menu item. And now in here, I'm going to say um, uh, notify users of product cancellation. Cancellation. Learn how to spell. OK. Uh, we'll do that. And so now I've made this change. I've made no changes, fortunately, over to my page. And so now 
uh, if I go back in and run live preview, we'll see that in fact uh, the changes that I made to the menu are now reflected. The good news is that wherever I am using this uh, menu, uh, those changes will now be reflected across. And so you can see here in this case, I dragged and dropped to another vertical menu. Uh, we see that we've got a button called um, a menu entry called order inventory. There's my separation button, uh, separation line, if you will, uh, and then two more after that. Now, is this entirely practical? Of course not, but it does sort of show you how easy it is to do. I can now turn around and I could perhaps go to my edit orders button, edit orders page, I'm sorry, and uh, jump back into design mode. And of course, I can turn around and I can grab my uh, orders menu that I've now made those changes to, drag and drop it into here, uh, click live preview, and uh, away I go. I should uh, now see the exact same menu that I just made a change to. So again, the beautiful thing is, it's you know reusing an object uh, and using an Iron Speed Designer, you know, makes it pretty easy to create the you know do the work once and then reap the rewards of that work many times over. So. Um, in a second here, Iron Speed will finish its compilation and generation process and uh, we'll then see the fruits of our labors, if you will, and that will work very nicely for us. And so it's almost done and here we go uh, and there is our menu. So that very easily again shows us how well the process works with a, just a little bit of care and attention. And if you're looking for a tool that will completely localize your Iron Speed applications, then look no further than our own Milestone Localizer. You can visit ironspeedmvp.com for more information. On that note, I'd like to thank you for watching this video today. On behalf of myself, Milestone Software, and Iron Speed Designer, I'd like to thank you and hope you have a great day.